Hi, this is Helena Hart, and welcome to my interview with Brian Reeves on navigating the three stages of love, from codependence to interdependence. Brian is just such an amazing coach and author. I was telling him before we started this interview that I've actually cried reading his articles, just tears streaming down my face, which is pretty unlike me <laughs> reading something, because his work is just so transformative, and it just resonated so deeply with me personally and so many women. I've spoken to, so I'm so excited and honored to be talking with you today. So welcome, Brian. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Helena. Helena, right? Helena. Yes, yes thank, you thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. Uh, it seems like I've been making women cry for a very long time. <laughs> and, 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 um, oh, goodness. So maybe we'll talk about why that has been and through this interview, but no, truly, I, I, I'm honored to, uh, speak with you. Thank you for reaching out. And I'm excited about what we're going to talk about. I'm excited too. So I would love to just jump right in and I'm yeah. actually curious myself. What was it that made you want to be a coach and do this work that you're doing now? I actually didn't want to be a coach. I, I didn't, I didn't, I, what, what really is called to me for most of my life is, 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 you know, waking up from our madness. Just, 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 I don't know. I, I was in the military I was very shut down for a lot of my life. I was, I was just, I felt very disconnected. You know, even that, that joke that I, I just, that joke I just made about making women cry, what, what, what I'm really pointing at is I was so disconnected and shut down for so much of my life that I, I, I both suffered and created so much suffering in, in the world around me, even with the best of intentions. And so there was just, but there's something beneath all of that, that, I, you know, I don't know, from, from the time I was really young, I just knew I was destined to, I just knew I didn't come here to, to sell Coca-Cola, to sell sugar water, to, to, to do bullshit. I knew I was here for something real, and I'm sure a lot of people watching this can relate to that. Absolutely. I definitely relate to that. And I relate to feeling shut down a lot too. That was a huge problem mm -hmm. I had personally. And I know that a lot of women are at that place, like feeling scared to be vulnerable and open up to someone, especially when it comes to their love life and dating and relationships. So thank you for sharing that. And let's jump right into the topic. Can you tell me a little bit about what codependence is? I mean, it's kind of like a buzzword that we all hear, but I would love to hear like, what does yeah. it mean to you? Yeah, well, codependence very simply means making the outside world responsible for your well-being. Making people, your bank accounts, circumstances, um, just your parents, whatever, making the outside world responsible for your well-being. That's codependence. And, and the way that I usually um, outline this for, for folks or, or, or have people consider this is just imagine when you're a child, you're a baby. You're born into the world completely helpless. If someone doesn't feed you, and not just feed you, but actually touch you, hold you, care for you, give some kind of caring, you will die. You'll literally die, right? For the first many years of your life. That's codependence. Like that's, we're literally codependent on other beings for, to, to survive. But what happens is, we grow up, you know, we spend 10, 15, 20 years, um, our nervous systems being attuned to that survival uh, vibe. Like if I don't do things a certain way to either get attention or avoid abuse, uh, I'll die. And then we become adults and we bring that same patterning, that same nervous system patterning and, and also the, 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 the beliefs that we believe into our adult relationships and that's why it feels like like if the, the partner i have if they don't love me or talk to me the right way or touch me the right way or or treat me the right way if they leave oh it feels like i'm gonna die right oh yeah that's codependence I, yes i can definitely relate to that for sure in my past so would you say we're all sort of codependent then? absolutely we all have a codependency on the world around us and 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 I don't even want to illegitimize it. I mean, there is legitimacy. We all do impact each other. If my partner says an unkind word, it hurts. I feel it. Language matters. But that's just stage one. We're talking about codependence to interdependence. Most of us live fully in that stage one codependent way of being 
where if we're disrespected or, or, you know, treated a certain way or not treated a certain way, we just, you know, fall apart. Absolutely. And just for everyone watching, be sure to stay to the end of this interview because Brian's going to share his top tips to move from codependence to interdependence. You can really connect with a man or with your partner and just bring them closer than ever, not out of like a neediness, but out of like the wholeness of who you are. I hope I said that right. <laughs> Good enough. Close enough. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, absolutely. It, it really, it, and it really is about shifting uh, neediness to desire. And, 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 and that's really from the first stage, we're very needy, like, like a baby. We're needy. I need you. I need everything. I need, if I don't get, and, and so much of what we think we need, we don't actually need. We really want, but we relate to it as such a, it's a need. And if I don't get it, I'm going to die or I'm going to be miserable or life's going to suck or whatever, a million things. And that just keeps us stuck in that insanity. And I'm sure, you know, uh, I've certainly experienced the more I need something and demand it of someone, the less they want to give it to me. Absolutely. Yes. I'm like laughing over here because I have been there myself so many times. I know so many women watching can relate to that. So mm -hmm. what would you say, what's like the first step for a woman to get out of that place of neediness? Or like you said, I need this man to love me in this way, or I'm going to feel yeah. abandoned or something like that. What's the first step? Well, what happens at the end of, of stage one codependence, what, what, what gets people out of codependence is, the, is the, the recognition that, oh my God, this shit doesn't work. Demanding he do what I want, demanding life be a certain way, uh, it just doesn't fucking work. Or, or changing myself to please someone because if I change myself, then they'll, then they'll love me or give me or just leave me alone or you know, back up, doesn't work. In fact, that was my experience long before I even had any conceptual knowledge of, of these stages. I was in a really challenging relationship where I changed myself I, and I didn't change myself, but it was like, you know, we slam back and forth between caring so much about what my partner thinks about me and what they do to then not caring at all because it doesn't fucking work anyway, you know? And, and at the end of stage two, it's kind of like, I am not responsible for your happiness. You're not responsible for mine, but I'm not responsible for yours. It's kind of like, you know, it's like, it's like we plant that flag in the ground and say, I'm going to be responsible for my own well-being. That's the beginning of stage two. The independence stage. I love that. I love everything you're saying. So what's the next step? So you realize it doesn't work looking to someone else to make you feel loved or to give you what you think you need from them. And then you move out of that. What's the next step in this process? So, <clears throat> so stage two is characterized by, by self-love, self-work, uh, self personal growth work, right? Which is all about now, see, we spend all of stage one trying to get someone else to meet our needs, right? And again, it, maybe it works for a minute, <laughs> but then it doesn't. It doesn't last long. It's unsustainable and endlessly frustrating. Yeah. And, and even, even there are the ways, so one of, my, one of the specialties, one of the, the, the uh, foundations of my work is masculine and feminine dynamics. Because in stage one, a more masculine person, um, their needs are different than a stage one more feminine person. So even, so we're both trying to get different needs met. And the crazy thing is we think that, well, if I just give you what my needs are, like, a, like a, a, a more masculine man, let's say, he'll think, look, if I just let my woman kind of be free, because that's what I want, this should work. Right. And yes. it doesn't. Absolutely. And, and, and she'll think, well, if I just give him lots of connecting behavior, I'll do lots of things that would be connecting kind of relationship, you know, I'll show up and we're going to do an amazing relationship. And then it doesn't fucking work. He's not happy. It's like, what the hell? So stage one, that insanity of, of, of thinking, you know, I can manipulate or control another person to get what I want. Well, in stage two, it's all about, wait, I'm going to take care of, of, of numero uno right here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to meet my needs. So self-love. There's a big self-love movement right now. Even a few years ago, I don't know if anymore so much, but a few years ago, there was this whole thing about um, uh, mostly women were marrying themselves. Did you hear about that? I think so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they, were, they were having weddings with, with just one person on yeah. top of the cake, you know, inviting their friends. Like it, it's the ultimate 
a proclamation of independence. I don't need a man. That's stage two. So anything that is, is all is really, it's, stage two is all about taking care of yourself radically, radical self-love, right? Taking yourself on dates, um, uh, traveling by yourself, doing, again, you know, going to, to, you know, men will go to yoga workshops. They'll go learn how to meditate. You know, um, women might start a business in kind of that stage two mentality. I'm, I don't want to depend on a man. I don't want to have to depend on anyone. Anyway, I can do it myself. Right. So I'll start my own business. Right. So, so a lot of men tend to do more of the emotional inner work and, and a lot of women may tend to do more of the external kick ass work in stage two. Interesting. Wow. I've actually never heard it put that way before. So let's, can we back up just a little bit and yeah. talk about the masculine and feminine dynamics just because I yes. love everything you have to say about that. Yes. It sounds like what you were saying was the masculine energy partner has this need for freedom and space and the feminine energy wants to connect and be closer. Do I have that right? Absolutely. Yeah. That, the, the, the masculine value is freedom and the feminine value is connection. And what happens when those two come together in relationship, which is what we're drawn, I mean, masculine and feminine intimacy, that's what, whether same sex or, or heterosexual, that's what we, that's why we do intimacy to exchange those juicy energies, but they're operating from two fundamentally different values. And so what I often, what you'll often see is the more feminine partners always saying, let's connect, come closer, come closer, give me more. I want more of your, fill me more. I want more love, more flow between us. And the more masculine partners like, whoa, you know, let's, let's stay free. I need to maintain some freedom here. I need my freedom and, and see connection. You know, look, I use my hands as an example. Like my, my hands are free. One, you know, they're independent and free. When you connect them, they're bonded. And so in stage one codependence, what happens is, you know, you've got the, the, the feminine hand saying, connect with me, connect with me. I want to connect. You're not connecting with me. Why are you making me miserable? And, and, and then you've got the, the masculine hand saying, I want to be free. Stop fucking connecting with me so much. You know, Jesus, give me, I need space. Mm -hmm. Right. And you, and it just descends into chaos. Yeah. I thought you were like, it was like the story of my life before I figured out what I was doing that was like pushing that away. So what would you say to a woman who wants to connect and is feeling frustrated? Like, what can she do specifically when she wants to connect with a man and he's pulling away, he needs his space? Well, you got to give him his space first. But again, this is where these three stages are really, really important and relevant because um, what... So I've been coaching couples now for about four years. And what I frequently see is that, is that it's, uh, and I'm, I'm going to frame this in heterosexual terms just because it's easier, but this happens in same sex relationships also. But what you find is, is the more feminine partner who's usually, but not always the woman, she's wanting to really kind of take the relationship to that interdependent place, like connected and blissed out is like her, her yearning. And the more masculine partner, he's more kind of like, whoa, let's just, you know, let's maintain some freedom. And so what, what, a, what, a, what a woman who's kind of feeling that like, uh, he's not connecting, he's not get, getting, he's not giving me what I want. The way that I often hear it is, how can I get my man to show up? How can I get a man to want to grow? How can I get him? At, you can't get a man to do anything. And if you can get him to do something, then you won't respect him and he won't respect himself. All right. So that's number one. You can't get him to do anything that he doesn't authentically want to do. Not if you want to actually keep loving him or liking him <laughs> or respecting him. Of course, him. yes, yes. I always say you can't make a man do something that he doesn't want to do. Not, not in any sort of like permanent, lasting way that's going to really feel good and make you feel secure and loved because it's coming from him. Can you like inspire a man to want to connect more, anything like that? You can, but not from your first stage neediness. And this is where doing your own personal work, your own learning how to second stage, connect with yourself. What's nurturing for you? A lot of times when I'm, when I'm supporting people, um, 
navigating out of stage one, that codependent, I need, I need, you know, I need to connect. I need, how do I get him to all of that? One of the practices we'll do is the, is the, the self love diet, right? Where you just radically every day doing the things that make you light up that aren't dependent on him showing up. I love that. And what does that do in the relationship or what does it do for that man when you start doing yeah. things to and doing those things for yourself? So, well, a number of things. So w- one of the first things it does though, is it just naturally starts filling you up with, with beautiful feminine energy because you're just, you're filling your life with what feels good. Well, naturally when you do what feels deeply good and deeply nourishing, you come alive. I mean, your your the light comes back into your eyes right? Your, your body, the, the, the actual way you hold your body shifts and changes. So what happens is as you're now really filling yourself up with love, self-love, he's going to notice. He's going to start to notice because he's naturally drawn his masculine core. And again, this doesn't have to be a man. This could go the other way, but his more masculine core, the reason he chose you to begin with is because of the, of the gift of, of, of energy that you are. Right? He, he, in all likelihood, he didn't choose you because you had a lot of money or you had, you know, he chose you because of, of the gift of your, of your femininity, right? And what happens in long-term relationships, especially when that energy gets shut down because we've all been taught to, to, to really oppress that feminine being in ourselves and therefore in others, right? All the emotions and the flavor and the fl- and the, all of that. We've been taught, whoa, that's too much. Calm it down, right? So in relationship, when that happens, when, when you know, and we live in a masculine reward world. So in a, in a long, it doesn't, doesn't take long, but over time, when that feminine energy, the more it gets shut down, the more he is going to look elsewhere for feminine energy, even if it's just porn, right? Porn is just a nonstop supply of easy feminine energy. That's why a lot of men go there because watching porn, there's no one, you know, there's no one complaining that you're doing it wrong (laughs) on a porn video. You know, you're not being burdened. Like you're free. You feel very free as a man. He feels very free watching porn. Well, I want to talk about something you said with, a woman being too much because I know I have yet to speak with a woman who, you know, hasn't heard a man say that. Like you're just too much. Do you hear that? I know you coach a lot of couples. Do you hear that too? And what can women do to like, what would you tell a woman who's who's hearing that from a man? Well, absolutely. Look, this is one of the, one of the, one of the, the iron, the ironic comedies of, of, of being human is that the feminine, nature she's always wanting more 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 and the masculine nature is always wanting less 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 right um it just take you know conversation a feminine person in conversation they can just talk and talk and talk and talk a feminine or a masculine person in conversation is you know what's the point where's this going what can, when are we going to get to the end right so um what what i'm what i'm pointing at here is feminine energy always occurs as um something of of a of a of a i'll just use this word something of a, of an annoyance to masculine energy it happens to me i mean I, i'm very aware of all of this and yet i can still see sometimes when i'm really overwhelmed in the presence of a lot of feminine energy so what, what women can learn, though, is to just, is to recognize that that's present, that may be present. It's not personal. It's not at all personal. What, what men are responding to, and again, I'm framing it heterosexually, but by no means is this just a man-woman thing. But what, what men are dealing with is like, we've been trained to keep our, our feminine, our emotional expression in this really narrow range. And then here you show up with this huge range. I remember one of my, uh, a woman I worked with a few, maybe a couple months ago was telling me how when she was a child, her father, when when her and her sister were at the dinner table and they'd start laughing, giggling uncontrollably, 
it would infuriate him. All they're doing is laughing. He would send them to their rooms for laughing at the table. Right? So it's not like just, just, the, just the upset that gets, I, I know I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but this is, it's like, it's not just the negative emotions that, that, that are, are asked, you know, okay, quiet down. It's also, as you, surely you know, it's the big positive, the, the joy and the laughter, all of that. Also, the, the, the masculine around you can say, whoa, shut up. Right, right, right. So on one hand, it's like it can be too much because like you said, men have this narrow range and then we show up with this bigger range of emotion. And then, but on the other hand, I heard you say that feminine energy is like what men crave. So how can totally. we move? Yeah. What's the distinction there? So, so, so the, 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 the opportunity, the challenge, and, and this is how we're both really pulling each other through these three stages to interdependence because interdependence is our, is our greatest liberation. It's where... It's where in, in that freedom, we also feel connected to everything. It's the ultimate freedom and the ultimate connection, right? And we're pulling each other. I, 20 years ago, I realized, you know, I was just a teenager and I realized, wow, we're all, we're all helping each other grow more functional through our dysfunctions. Like we're teaching each other through our insanity. We're, we're helping each other grow. And that's exactly what that means. So, you know, a man to really feel alive, we can increase our capacity. Now, again, nobody teaches us this. So we just kind of walk around thinking, hey, you know, get inside of my capacity, woman, Jesus, I can't deal with you out, out there. But the reality is his, his yearning, his, 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 his mastery as a human being is learning how to open his emotional capacity, open his heart, even when things don't go the way he wants them to. So even in my own practice is when I feel that overwhelm is to feel it, just be in the overwhelm, <sighs> not make it about my partner, not reject her, not, you know, not say anything that might make her feel bad or shut down. And I'll even tell her, Hey, I want you to feel everything. I want you to, I don't not want you to shut down. And like, but it's, it doesn't mean that I can really meet her in that big place. Right. But my practice is to just be in my discomfort. And likewise, her practice is to be her and know that any recoil or any type of sort of, oh, that I may have, it's not about her. Got it. Got it. I love every, this is such valuable information. Just amazing. So I would, I doubt you would ever suggest to a woman to like shrink herself down to fit into like a man's capacity to deal with her. Right. Oh, have... Hell no. <laughs> hell no. In fact, that is the, that is, that is not, the world needs the opposite right now. Right. The world needs the opposite. In fact, you know, the, the movie Wonder Woman was so, prof did you see the movie? I did it. No, not yet. Oh my God, woman, you got to see that movie. It was <laughs> There's so much in that movie that is, is, is about the feminine really being bigger than, than, than what men can hold and yet commanding their, their, their allegiance, their service to her. And they don't want to, even the good guys don't want to follow her lead, but she's so grounded, connected to what's happening in the moment, to the emotion and the suffering that these men have no choice. And that's really, in, 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 in even an intimate relationship, you know, as a, as a woman really develops her capacity to fully feel what she's feeling and offer that to the relationship. Notice I said, offer it. Offer it. Offer her emotions, her feelings, her truth, but in a way that doesn't um, make him wrong for it. Absolutely. Okay. I think that's the distinction right there. I love that word offering her, her presence and her feminine energy without overwhelming him or, or needing something from him constantly. Right. Do you have any specific like tips on how a woman can do that? Cause that is just so such an incredible, yeah. I love it. Well, I do, I do. So, and that's, and that's really built on a stage two independence practice. You've got to be able to own your stuff. Right, you've got to be able to feel what you feel and own it. That this is mine. It's not, you know, some people think their bank account is responsible for their happiness. It's just not. If you've had enough money, you eventually realize it ain't about the money. Right? It's the same thing in relationship. It's your partner's not responsible for your well-being. So 
in stage three, what you can learn to do, and, and I call them, they're feminine practices, they're masculine practices, but these are third stage practices. And one of the things that, that you can do, and me and my partner practice with this a lot. So for example, when she's having a big emotional experience, when she's upset or she's just going through something, one of the things that she'll language for me is you haven't done anything wrong. Even if I've done something that was hurtful, acknowledging that I haven't done anything wrong is so helpful for my brain, my masculine identified brain. Cause you know, to, to the masculine, we, we, we are good if we do good. And I guarantee you there just aren't, there are very few men who, who, who intentionally want to fuck up your life. There just aren't that, there's just, they're very few. Now there are, there are droves and you know, of, of unskillful, unaware men, even insensitive, but that's, that's, you know, locked in stage one. We're not sensitive to each other in the same way that a woman is not sensitive to her man's fear of being wrong or doing wrong. She just said, Oh, it's your ego. You're stubborn. You know, no, he's just, he's in a freedom value and, and his identity is sourced by what he does. And so the more that as a, as a third stage practice, when you can just re- tell him, Hey, you didn't do anything wrong. And, but when you, when you did that thing, oh my, I felt terrible. It really felt bad. You didn't do anything wrong, but I felt like shit when that happened. Like I got nauseous. I felt terrible. Right. So it's like starting with, you didn't do anything wrong. No. And this is a bigger conversation. And I, and I just released a a, a program about boundaries, Um, an online program on boundaries because stage two is all about creating boundaries 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 you want to get out of codependence have healthy clearly communicated and and honored boundaries i love that okay let's definitely talk about boundaries a little bit Mm -hmm. first i just want to make sure i have this right because i love what you said yeah so um what i sort of heard you say was like men can handle our emotions they can handle our feelings you just don't like it when we say it's your fault, right? Or, or kind of holding you responsible? Or well, well, of course not. Yeah, I mean, again, that's why it's really important to use these three stages because, um, to be clear, uh, most men don't like the emotions. I didn't say we like the emotions. Um, it's a, it's a matter of whether we welcome them or not. Got it. That's the distinction Um, because I can feel in my own body when I'm overwhelmed, I don't like anything that's happening outside of where I'm, where my limits, who does, Mm -hmm. but the third stage practice in the first stage, I just reject it. If it's outside of what I can handle, I reject it. And pretty much every woman is outside of, you know, (laughs) what I can handle. And that's the case for every guy. Mm -hmm. Right. So, but I'm aware of it. So my practice is to, to not reject it, but rather embrace it. And which in, in the embracing of it, I'm also now increasing my own capacity to just be alive and to feel everything that there is to be felt and to keep my heart open. I mean, really in the end, it's about, it's about allowing love to be present. Perfect. I, I love, love how you said that. Okay. Let's talk about boundaries. Obviously yeah. super important in relationships. I would just love to hear you speak generally. I would love to hear anything you have to say about boundaries. Yeah. So um, there's so many misconceptions about boundaries. A lot of people will, will think that boundaries are just selfish. Like I, I don't, I, you know, if I really ask for what I want, um, isn't that selfish of me? Doesn't love mean you should kind of, you know, like have no boundaries. I mean, aren't boundaries just walls and, and they are, I mean, a boundary is a wall, but I, I frame it like this. It's the difference between requests and requirements. Requests and requirements. Requests are just things that I would like to experience. But if they don't happen, I'm not gonna leave the relationship. A requirement is a non-negotiable. Like if this isn't in place, I'm not staying. Now here is where people really screw this up. They present requirements as requests or requests as requirements. 
I love how you said that. Can you give me some examples? Cause that is huge. definitely. So for example, um, I see this a lot, like, um, in, in, in a relationship where let's say, let's say a man does not, uh, have, maybe he's, maybe he's really flirtatious with other women or he's affectionate in a way with other women that are not his partner in a way that he justifies. And yet she feels very violating. And they can stay in that place for a long time where she'll kind of say she doesn't want him to do that, but yet she tolerates it. And he'll still, whatever that, and maybe it's just female friends and maybe he has no, maybe, maybe there's not really anything going on there, but still the behavior is really uncomfortable and he just wants his freedom to be how he was being. Right. And especially like with social media, it's like just commenting on another person's photo. I mean, he could say something that might be a little bit flirtatious or, or, and she may see that and it's very, it's hurtful, but she doesn't know how to communicate it because she doesn't want to be that girl. Right. And yet she ends up being that girl even more because she's now resenting him and he doesn't, he doesn't think there's anything wrong with what he did, et cetera, et cetera. Well, that's a classic example of where almost certainly a requirement is being presented as a request. I see that a lot in clients. Oh my gosh. So I'm sure you do too. What would you have a woman do then to turn that around? Well, you've got to be honest with yourself first. What is your requirement? Is it a requirement um, that, uh, in other words, where's the boundary? What's okay for you and what isn't? And, you know, a lot of times these are really gray areas because what is flirting to one person is just, you know, being playful and funny to another, right? So a willingness to dance with this also is really important, but she's got to first just be really clear. I don't want my partner. And sometimes, especially when, when there's, when there's these kind of scenarios where there, where there's a real issue at hand, like there's something that really needs to be addressed, the more clear and specific you can be, the better. So in other words, maybe she says, okay, so I don't want my partner um, complimenting pretty other pretty women right now, just right now. Cause it does, it doesn't feel safe because I don't trust Right. One of the things that's important to know about boundaries is they don't have to be forever. They can just be for right now. It's like, it's like putting on a bandage, you know, a bandage is a boundary that when there's a wound, you, you need a bandage so that the wound can heal. If you try to heal a wound without a bandage, it's just going to get infected, but you also don't wear the bandage for 20 years. You know, you take it off after a few weeks when it's, when it's healed, it's the same with boundaries in relationship. There may be boundaries that you need in place that may kind of seem ridiculous, but right now they serve for the healing of the wound, right? And that's what's really important. And, and when you can have that conversation, because see the, 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 the masculine partner, he's afraid that this boundary is going to last forever and I'm not going to be free. That's what he's feeling. I'm not going to be free and I don't want to be, I don't want to be in prison, right? Yeah, absolutely. I, I've never heard it put that way before. That's totally brilliant. What specifically could she say? I love that example because I know it happens all the time. So yeah. what, can, what could a woman say? So she, she can acknowledge, look, you're not doing anything wrong. I really, she, she, what, what she can do, and this is again a second stage practice. See, in stage one, there's only I, just me. Only I exist. You're not, you don't even exist except for how you affect me. Stage two, there's I and you. So in other words, I can see my pain and all my stuff and my need and everything, but I can also see yours. So she can tell him, look, you're not doing anything wrong. I know you have, I know you have a, a, um, good intentions. And here's the thing. If you don't believe that, then what the hell are you doing with this guy? Exactly. So this is presupposing that you, that you, you do see that he has good intentions, that he's not really doing anything nefarious or, you know, completely out of alignment. So assuming that, and that's, and this is where it, it happens all the time. So assuming that you, that you see that and believe it, well, um, acknowledge it, acknowledge it, right? You're acknowledging him. You're validating his experience, even if it's not yours, just acknowledging it. And then, um, claiming your boundary, saying, you know, I, I get that you're not doing anything wrong, but I have this sensitivity. I have this wound, this fear, this insecurity. I know it's not your fault. 
I've had it for a long time before I ever met you even, you know, what something happened as a child or you don't have, you don't have to say all those things. But the point is acknowledging that he's not the one doing this to you, even though his behavior may be triggering it. Right. And, and, and then simply, you know, this is what I need right now to just feel safe in this relationship. I really want this to work. I honor you. I honor your freedom. But for right now, just for now, this is a requirement for me. This is something I would really like to practice with you. Um, and I know it's not going to be comfortable for you. And, and I, I don't, hopefully this won't be for very long, but for just for right now, while I'm learning to, to trust again, and it has nothing to do with you. See, notice she's, she's like, in a way she's absolving him of responsibility while simultaneously claiming her, her, her right to be cared for in the way that she wants to be cared for. Does that make sense? Yes, that was just like masterful. I love that was perfect. And I can see how women could apply that to really any situation when it comes to requests versus requirements. So Absolutely. Amazing. Yeah. And, and I know this is really tricky. And in, in, in that, that program, I actually, I created scripts, like this language, because it's so, it's challenging to walk that line to both honor someone and claim what you want for yourself. You know, because I, you know, I work with a, an, another couple where two really wonderful, beautiful, healthy, independent people, and neither one of them want to be that person to the other person. Um, you know, the, in, the, in the words of, of, the, of the wife, she's like, I don't want to be that, you know, nagging psycho bitch wife. Those are her words, not mine. Mm -hmm. And I, I get it. And though, they're in chaos because they're, she's not honoring a boundary that's really important for her. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Oh, I've just seen that happen over and over and over in so many different women, especially just kind of like we said before, kind of wanting to shrink yourself down so you don't seem like high maintenance or like too much. So I love that. I can see how that'd be really attractive to a guy too, to have that standard. Have those boundaries. Definitely. And, and, and men, we, we do it. We do it as well. I mean, this, this is, you know, I created this program because I need to learn it myself, you know, boundaries and, and, it's very easy for us men to also kind of let ourselves be violated in all these other ways. You know, I've, I've, I'm 43 now and I've, I've been, I've been abused by women in countless ways, but I've allowed it because I didn't stand for my own boundaries. You know, one of, one of my really important boundaries is especially, um, you know, in, in an intimate relationship is don't assume, you know what I'm thinking. Don't do that. That does, that's, that feels violating to me when you just come in and just assume you know what's happening for me. Cause I, it's like, it's just, I don't feel safe when I'm just, when I'm just have that placed on me and men, we've experienced that so many times in our relationships. Yeah. I've heard that from a lot of men. <laughs> like and friends. it can feel very violating. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. Thank you for sharing all of that. That was just mm -hmm. really, really valuable and helpful for everyone. I, I know this is going to be huge. So let's talk about step three or the third yeah. stage. Stage three. Meeting love. Yeah. Stage three. Yeah. So I love like stage three is it's such a juicy, I mean, this is where the magic happens and, and it's built on stage one and stage two. And, and by the way, you can go through all three of these stages in 10 minutes. Oh, really? It's, it's not like, it isn't like, and I could, I could outline how that happens. It's not like, you know, in your twenties, you're in stage one and then at 32 years old, you graduate to stage two and you live there and maybe in the forties. No, you can go through all through all three of these in, in, in minutes. Most people just stay in stage one their entire life. But when you've expanded and, and, and done your inner growth work and you've, you've, you, know, you, you have capacity to be with lots of situations and, you, and you, you've done mindfulness work so you can see your own insanity, like you can see how crazy you are, <laughs> which we all are, you know, it's like that you start to wake up and you, you, like the world looks different. And, and now you're more concerned with giving your gift than just getting shit for yourself right? That's the third stage. The third stage is all about really giving the best of you, even if you don't get back what you think you should get back for it, right? So um, the third stage is, is really, again, built on the, the in, sec, in the second stage, we're connecting with ourselves, finding our true selves, so that in the third stage, we can offer it, whatever that is, right? And, and the magic of intimacy in the third stage is, is two people who come together just, just full, 
and offering the best of themselves to each other. And, you know, that stage one stuff will still come up as I, I think I may have said this earlier, you know, sometimes <clears throat> my partner might say something to me that, that feels insensitive. I actually do it all the time to her, not through any bad intention. It's just, you know, I can never know what's going to happen. You know, we're always running into each other's stuff. And she'll, or I'll, I'll have a moment of, of like, ah, oh, that hurt. Ah, you know, my, my old wound, an old wound will poke up. That's my stage one. Like, ah, oh, you know, mommy didn't love me in the same way that you're not loving me right now. <laughs> you know, and I'll feel that. And then I can realize, oh, okay, that's my shit. And then I can say, well, this is her experience. And she said that because of this, or she's just, maybe she's upset and she's in pain. So right, that second stage. And then in the third stage, it's like, I can just, okay, I can just love both of us through it, right? I can love her. I can love me. It's like now we're, we're really creating partnership in the third stage because it's like I can offer my love. I can love her no matter how she shows up. If she's angry, upset, if she's saying this, saying that, if she's like, I can just be present and just love her no matter what. Right. I mean, that's the, that's the ultimate third stage and same, 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 you know, with a woman and, 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 and her partner, even if he's not showing up the way she wants him to, she can still love him and embrace him. And, and even, you know, what I love about the third stage too, is it, it's, it's not about doing what the other person wants. It's giving the gifts that the other person needs. Got it. Oh, I love how you said that. That is great. So how can we do that? And, and I'd love to talk about your specific tools, like your maybe top three or so tips for creating that inter interdependence and moving into it so you can really connect with a man or your partner and just bring them closer without, without that needy, desperate vibe that we can all experience when we're in stage one. Yeah. Well, I've sprinkled a few tips throughout so far. Um, but one of my favorite uh, practices, kind of stage three practices is um, now, and it's different. Again, there are masculine practices and there are feminine practices and they're, and they're different. So, you know, a, a feminine practice is, is being able to tell the, you just tell the truth of what you're feeling really. And not necessarily with words, but what's happening in your body and feeling it, expressing it. It's like, it's like making love. I mean, when, when you're making love to a man, you need to tell the truth about, does it feel good? And if it feels good, he needs to see it. And if it doesn't feel good, don't fake it. He needs to see that too, so that he can do something different. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. So it's not just the word. I mean, I know the words are important, but it's like this vibe that a man is picking up on, right? It, totally. And now a lot of men will need the words because they're not that sensitive to the vibe. <laughs> we're, pretty, we're pretty not sensitive, if you haven't noticed. So the words are helpful, but, but doing so in a way that, again, does not make us wrong. That's the third stage practice. Tell the truth, but don't make us wrong for it. Don't make it our fault because it's not anyway. You're choosing this. If you're in conversation with me, you're choosing it. Even if you're married to me, I mean, even you're staying married, it's by your choice. We don't live in a country or a time. There are, I know there are places out there that that's still a thing, but most of you watching this video, like you're, you have choice. Even if you don't think you do, you do. You absolutely have choice. Acknowledge that you're choosing this. So it's not his fault. If you're miserable, own that. Right. But then be honest about your misery. Be honest about what's happening for you. Cause if you're not, he has no, he has no chance. But if you make it his fault, he also has no chance, right? So that, I mean, that would be my top tip for, for interdependent being. And that goes both ways. I mean, even as a, even the masculine is, as I said, like when I'm feeling overwhelmed, when it's like, whoa, there's a lot of energy coming at me and I can't quite, you know, be with all of it. My practice is to breathe and just feel my discomfort. And, and I will language, I will, I, I literally will say these words to my partner. I'll tell her, babe, I want you to feel everything. I don't want you to shut down. I don't want you, I want you alive. And, and you know, it's funny, we have a, we have a puppy now, me and my lady. And, and they're, both of them are like my puppies because they have so much energy all the time. And it's like, I, I'm like, I love watching her and the puppy play. Cause it's like, cause it kind of like, oh, I, cause I can't go, I just don't have that emotional flexibility that she has 
right? But I don't want her to shut down, not at all. But I can feel how sometimes my reaction may feel like rejection to her. And I know that that's devastating for her to feel. So I will tell her, and this is my third stage practice. Again, I'll just call it out. I'm feeling this. I'm feeling, yep, I'm a little overwhelmed. I'm a little, but, but it's okay. I, you know, I love that you're full of life. I mean, I think I told her that last night. I love that you're full of life. I wouldn't want you any other way. But that doesn't mean I can always handle it. Right. But, you know, the third stage, it's not a it's not a destination where we just land and then we're there forever. It's a practice. Interdependence relationship is a practice. You know, even boundaries. We're constantly accidentally stepping over boundaries. It's you know, in relationships, it's 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 not about getting it right. It's about learning how to make repairs when we when when offense happens. Got it. I love that. I, this has just been so amazing. Would you, is there anything else you'd like to share that we didn't cover or would you want to like recap the three steps or three stages? Oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, let's, we'll just, we'll just recap the three stages. So the first stage is codependence, which is, um, you know, it's all about me. What am I getting? What, what am I getting out of this? And, and the other extreme of that is I don't deserve anything out of this, right? That's all codependence. Even, even like the, you know, the, the hero, there's in the hero, whether you're a hero or a zero, that's codependence. You know, you're manipulating, you're not telling the truth, you're controlling, whether overtly or passively, right? That's stage one. And it's all about me. It's, it's, it's funny. People will say in stage one, well, I don't want to be selfish. Well, you're fucking super selfish because you're not being honest, right? Because you're afraid of losing something, whether, whatever that may be, that's really selfish, right? With a, with a, in, the, in the small, with the small S self-ish, small S self. That's stage one. Stage two is independence. There's an I and a you. There's two of us. I take care of me. You take care of you. The, the motto of stage two is I don't need you and I don't want you to need me either. Right? That's stage two. And that's an, we've all got to go through that stage. And then stage three and I didn't say this before, the, the consciousness of stage three is we. And that's where all relationships, that's the most challenging thing for, for, for a lot of people to, to, to break through in relationships is from the I and you consciousness to we, where we're making decisions not just to serve you know, my little self or your little self, but the relationship. We're, we're surrendered to something bigger than both of us. And that's... I mean, that's magic, but it ain't easy. And it, it also, it ain't clean. You know, I mean, it's messy in that place too. Like relationships are messy. You know, I, I, I tell people, um, you know, love is messy. Stop trying to not get it all over you. I mean, that's just, it's messy. And we play with them. And in stage three, we play with the mess. In stage one and two, we're trying to clean it up. We're trying to get rid of the mess. Stage three, we embrace the mess. And then we really have fun. Oh, I love how you said that. That is so true. I'm like laughing over here throughout this whole thing because I've just found this to be so true in my own life and just countless women that I've worked with. So thank you so much. This was really, really amazing. And, and where can people find out more about you or do you have any like free gifts that you want to offer? I do. So just my, my website, brianreeves.com, Brian with a Y, reeves.com. And yeah, I think you're going to put a link, right? To my free gifts yes, absolutely. under the video. So uh, there's actually, yeah, there's a bunch, there's a few of them there. There's more than one, but um, I have an audio program called Love, Sex, Relationship, Magic, in addition to the Boundaries program. Um, and Love, Sex, Relationship, Magic is, we really dive into these three stages. And uh, one of my free gifts is a, is a module from Love, Sex, Relationship, Magic, where you get to take an, a relationship inventory. You get to, it's, a, it's one of my favorites because you really get a lot of self-awareness around how you've been showing up in relationship, your motivations, you know, basically why things have been looking the way they have. So that, that's the free gift uh, at the link that you're going to share. And there's a few others there actually also, but brianreeves.com, one-stop shopping, that's the place to go, blogs, programs videos yes, all yes. oh my gosh for everyone listening go read brian's blog and all his articles they're amazing they're really really amazing so thank you so much for sharing your time with us thank today you. i know it was so helpful for everyone and this was just amazing thank you thank you helena my pleasure